Hello my friends. I'm going to share with you today how to make the arched ribs for the ceiling dome and the jigs and fixtures that I use to build these. The ribs that we are making are laminated from quarter inch sheets of plywood. We need to build a glue up jig to do this. So tracing a parabolic curb onto a three-quarter inch sheet of plywood, we cut two patterns out. Two by four blocks are cut to be used as spacers between these two patterns. And there are holes drilled between the 2x4 blocks that are used for gluing clamps. The holes have to be large enough to fit the end of your C-clamps. The tight bend at the beginning of the arc can give a problem with bending the plywood and not having a crack. So to eliminate that problem, I'm cutting a kerf at the beginning edge of the plywood. And this tape edge is going to be used as my reference when I make repeated cuts on the one end. The table saw blade is set to cut halfway through the sheet of plywood. And I'm going to push the plywood through using my uh, T-square. You can see here I'm referencing the edge of the plywood with the leading edge of the tape. And the second cut, I put the kerf on that edge and push that cut through. And continue this for about 10 inches down the street. You can see here that the curves will allow the plywood to bend. I built the glue up jig to be able to bend a double arc in one glue up. So the glue up jig is six inches wide. This will allow me to split the glued up uh, arc and have two pieces that will finish at two and a half inches wide. Four quarter inch sheets of plywood are being glued up. The three outside sheets have curves cut in them. The inside sheet is uh, clean. Uh, the reason I did that is I don't want to have the grooves on the inside of the arc. Here you can see the saw curves and I'm placing those downward. To support the back of this glue up, I'm using a heavy piece of flexible plastic to be used as a support as additional help to keep from breaking the plywood. Uh, you can also use a piece of sheet metal that would do the same function. I placed a reference mark on the tight end of the gluing jig and I start my clamping from this mark on this end of the jig. After this clamp is tightened, clamp the other side at the same location.
with this second clamp being attached make sure that your plywood is going to be running parallel with the jig itself the next few clamps are going to be the hardest ones of the glue up this is because of the tight curve that you're trying to form I'm using a quick grip to uh, ratchet the plywood down to the gluing jig. This is allowing me to be able to fit my clamps uh, into the clamping holes and to the back of the board to be able to lock them down. As the C-clamps are tightened, move your quick grip progressively down the jig and keep uh, pressure, applying pressure to flex that board uh, to work the next C-clamp in. When you're putting these seat clamps on, put the screw handles to the top side of the jig. You see on the underside there, I have the handle going to the uh, bottom. This is going to cause a problem. I'm going to have to switch that clamp because I want to set that gluing jig. Uh, I want to have it standing up to apply the rest of the uh, seat clamps. Using the quick grip, keep it as close as to the C-clamps as you can. Uh, if you have it too far back, it's not going to be applying enough pressure uh, on the tight area of the uh, curve. As you get further away from that tight bend, it becomes much easier to bend the wood and apply the clamp. This part of the glue up is very easy. This one area, I noticed that there's a gap uh, between the layers of plywood, and I'm applying additional pressure to squeeze some glue out of that one spot. This one glue up is going to make two ribs when we split it down the center. We need a total of uh, 12 ribs, so that's six glue ups.
right here you can see I'm holding this from sliding with this stop and I can move the stop easily with this <coughs> and my third hand I have this connected and just leaning up against there so that's a stop for the top that will hold it in position while I'm cutting okay I don't like the noise Each reference line is going to be slightly different, so the stop block is going to have to be adjusted for each individual cut. Set. Lines crooked. Saw squared it up. I have my table saw fence set to split these uh, glue ups right down dead center. I'm going to cut each one. And you see I'm starting with this one with the sharp turn at the beginning. It's making the cuts a uh, little bit easier when you get to the end of the cut. Uh, you don't have such uh, torquing action uh, as you're pushing this through the the uh, saw blade. Notice my left hand when I push through uh, I have my fingers riding over the back side of the fence and I do this for safety to make it hard for my hand to cross into the saw blade. The individual ribs now have one rough surface on the outer edge and that needs to be trimmed and I have the fence now set at two and a half inches. This will be my finished width of the ribs. Notice on the narrower stock that's being cut that I'm using a push stick to uh, hold the workpiece tight up against the fence. When cutting small material, I keep my fingers away from the blade as far as possible. So that's the purpose of having these push sticks. After fabricating these 12 ribs, we need to start thinking about assembling our dome structure. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.